why the most likely starter for the Green Bay Packers right now among the rookies isn't Romeo Dobbs, but Aaron Rodgers threw gasoline on the Romeo Dobbs fire. We talk about it all coming up. You are locked on Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. You can follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet, and the show for fans who know what happened. They want to know why and how. We are back today. Um, We took yesterday off. Um, I was dealing with uh, a family issue, and I want to thank everyone who reached out, who offered their support, who said, take your time, be with your family. That's what the most important thing is. You're absolutely right. So thank you for for giving me that space. Um, It is important to me that you guys understand that that you are important to me too, um, and and that I love doing this show. And this show is um, a, a an outlet for me. It is something that makes me happy, that helps me through difficult times. And, and I have gotten really incredible notes from people, messages. Hey, I was listening to your show when I was dealing with this thing, when I was in the hospital. And that resonates with me because doing this show for the same reasons that you listen to a show, maybe to get outside of something that you're dealing with. Um, there are certainly times in my life when I do it um, for, the, for those same reasons. And, and that's not why I do it, but I, it, it helps me um, and is, is cathartic for me. Sometimes it's cathartic just for dealing with a game or just for dealing with a topic, something that is frustrating. I get to get on the mic and I get to talk through it and I get to share that with you. And that connection is really important to me. So, so thanks to everyone, um, who, who did reach out and thanks to everyone who, who is just, um, patient with me as, as my family works through this. Um, plenty to talk about. We missed a day, so stuff to catch up on. We're going to talk about Romeo Dobbs, okay? I promise we're going to talk about Romeo Dobbs. We're going to save that. Let's start with the cliffhanger. I think Romeo Dobbs is going to get plenty of opportunities this season. Um, And actually, the answer to who is the most likely starter for the Packers out of these rookies is Quay Walker. But that's not what we're going to talk about. Um, because David Bakhtiari is not ready to go, the Packers have had to do some shuffling at the offensive line. And as a result, they've had to play some guys out of position. Royce Newman playing some tackle. Zach Tom, the Packers drafted him to play guard, to play center. That's where he was during rookie camp. But they have said, and, and you assume this goes back to what the front office thought of him, what the scouts thought of him at Wake Forest. They said, let's try him at tackle. Well, guess what? He's out there with the ones now consistently. And part of that is David Bakhtiari is not out there and Elton Jenkins is not out there. And and so we'll see how this changes. Let's say David Bakhtiari is cleared to practice in a week. Then what happens? Do they just slide Yash Nyman over? Is that it? Is that the end of the discussion? Is he now the starting right tackle? I don't think so. I don't think that's just the end of the discussion. Yash, I thought, played well last year. And they have plenty of time invested in him. And I think if you needed to go play one game, you know, let's say a week one game against the Minnesota Vikings, against Daniil Hunter and Zadarius Smith, you'd, you'd probably rather have Yash Nyman out there, right? He, you've seen him go up against Trey Hendrickson and, and the Pittsburgh Steelers front 
um, albeit a a not healthy J or TJ Watt, not JJ Watt. And you saw him go up against a, 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 an incredible 49ers front. I I understand that. But you also used a draft pick on Zach Tom. And even after changing his position, he's immediately, on day one of pads, immediately he's out there. So clearly you saw enough of him that you thought, okay, we think he can pass protect well enough that he can transition, he can handle that mental load of the transition out to tackle from the interior, center, guard. Maybe he is Elton Jenkins and he can play all those spots. They clearly must think mentally he can handle it and and clearly he's proven he can because otherwise he wouldn't be out there. Royce Newman has gotten some run at that right tackle spot. Yash Nyman has gotten some run at that right tackle spot. And it's interesting because I assumed that the plan here is Elton Jenkins is not going to be ready for day one. David Bakhtiari is more likely to be ready for day one. And so presumably what you'd want to see is, and what you'd want to get is reps for Yash at right tackle because he is your third tackle. He's going to be the guy to get those reps when Elton Jenkins is not out there. Go from there. But we've seen Zach Tom play that right tackle spot a bunch with the ones. Now, Matt LaFleur, now with Adam Senevich, the former offensive line coach, is now in the OC chair. How does that affect the way that you game plan all of these things? They have proven that they are going to put the best five out there. That they are going to say, these are the, the best five guys. And, and we don't really care how much opportunities those players have had at those spots. If we think they can go out there and play, that's where they're going to be. So I am, I am at once saying that I think it is useful that Zach Tom is getting those right tackle reps while also understanding that the Packers would probably be comfortable with Yash at right tackle with him getting very few of those right tackle reps in the preseason. Now, think back to what happened with Elton Jenkins. He was given every opportunity to beat out Lane Taylor, including in the regular season, and, and I think we, this this gets lost. Matt LaFleur is a first-year head coach in 2019. Aaron Rodgers is his quarterback. They just drafted Elton Jenkins. He is a rookie. And they give him every opportunity to beat out a veteran interior offensive lineman to protect what was at the time a two-time MVP. And he's out there in games in the regular season splitting reps. Now, part of that is Elton Jenkins was really that good. Lane Taylor was just okay. But we're talking about a veteran. We're talking about a real guy who had started meaningful games in the NFL, who had started entire seasons in the NFL. This was a starter, a bona fide starter, not a high level one, but someone who was, I would say not entrenched, but, but a consistent starter over the last few years. And they gave Elton Jen- Jenkins every opportunity to beat him out. That was a risk that Matt LaFleur took. I don't think they are going to be risk averse if, if they think Zach Tom is the better player. And they're going to give him every opportunity. They're giving him every opportunity to prove it. If he does, I don't think they're going to be afraid to say, he is the best guy for this job in week one. We don't care if it is, you know, Alan Page. And and it's the Purple People Eaters. We're going to play the best five. And if Zach Tom, who is a rookie, is one of those best five, We don't care. We want the best five. That's what they're going to do. 
That's what they should do. And I'm not going to be surprised at all if he plays well in the preseason. And Elton Jenkins can't go week one, which, by the way, is not something I'm fully ready to take for granted yet. Then I think there is a very good chance he starts week one for the Green Bay Packers. Now, we're going to talk about the other fourth round pick who has a chance to start for the Green Bay Packers. We're going to do that in just a second. Before we do, let's talk about Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to check on all of your betting needs. Find your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. So many great NFL futures right now. The Packers over, hammer it. Romeo Dobbs, rookie of the year. Hope you didn't miss it. It was 100 to 1 like a week ago. It's already 50 to 1 a lot of places. Go get it now or it's going to it's going to be 25 to 1 in 2 weeks. The secret is out. Head to bet online or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action bet online where the game starts. As a as a blog boy, <laughs> <laughs> People say blogger. I don't even, I don't, I haven't written a blog post in two years. But uh, as a, as an analyst, as a podcaster, um, I, I get accused of hyping up players needlessly, of, of getting people excited, of being an optimist for no reason. I'm reading a really interesting book. Actually, I just finished it called The Psychology of Money by Morgan Housel. And he, in it, he talks about how pessimism is seen as a sign of intelligence, whereas optimism is often dismissed. I, I often um, have been thinking about that the last, basically since I finished the book. And I've thought about that a lot over the years. It was just interesting to see it in black and white in a book that I was reading. So don't listen to me on Romeo Dobbs then. That's fine. How about the four-time MVP, the two-time reigning league MVP? who has talked about how impressed he is with the approach, has mentioned that a number of times. And here is the money line from Aaron Rodgers. He said that he makes a wow play basically every day and that the only guys who have done that since he's been around have been the guys who end up being top 10 in receiving in Packers history. He's talking about Devontae Adams. He's talking about Jordy Nelson. He's talking about Greg Jennings. He's talking about Randall Cobb, who's 11th. Aaron Rodgers is throwing gas on the fire. He is not someone, generally speaking, who is going to, pardon the pun, gas up Rookies, don't forget what happened a couple years ago when that rookie class of receivers, the Jamon Moore, Equinemius St. Brown, Marquez Valdez, Scantling group, came into training camp and he lit into them in media availability. Not to the standard, it's not good enough, not preparing, all that stuff. Now that was a weird season. Rodgers was not happy. He admitted it on the Ayahuasca podcast. Um, that, that, you know, he, he was not playing his best. So there are a lot of extenuating circumstances that could have contributed to Aaron Rodgers frustration and his demeanor in that moment. But he is not someone who heaps praises on rookies. Remember, this is the same guy who just a couple weeks ago, I guess more than that now, but back in, in mini camps said, I don't care about potential. I care about production. I, I had no choice but in the moment to read that as a direct challenge to someone like Christian Watson, who comes in with a lot of hype, who comes in with a lot of potential because of the physical gifts, but has to put it all together. And Christian Watson, it's worth noting, came to North Dakota State. Remember our uh, rookie orientation series on Christian Watson with Ross Uglum from Packer Report, our buddy. And he said, Christian Watson got to campus feeling himself a little bit. Now, there's no indication that that was happening in Green Bay. It's just part of the history here that's worth noting. Romeo Dobbs getting this sort of praise from Aaron Rodgers is meaningful. Now, it's also, I think, 
worth pointing out that rookie receivers have not fared well in the Aaron Rodgers era. That's true, but a huge part of that has been opportunity. A huge part of that. And like, think about the most recent examples, right? Think about Devontae Adams. He gets drafted in 2014. That is Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb at the absolute peak of their powers. The absolute peak. Jordy Nelson was unbelievable that season. That was Randall Cobb's, really his his star-making season. And so if you're Devontae Adams, it's play on the outside. Remember, they went to Seattle, and it's just eat the Richard Sherman stuff. And by the way, and I said this at the time on my old podcast, the Too Deep NFL podcast, with Jason Hershorn, America's guest, go back and watch. Uh, Devontae's open against Richard Sherman on a number of occasions. And didn't get the ball. Go back and watch him against the Patriots. He was their leading receiver in the against the Patriots in a game where they said the Patriots did. We're taking out Jordy Nelson. Now they didn't. He scored on a long touchdown right before halftime. That was Mike McCarthy's magnum opus game in terms of play design and calling and, and everything that w- went into it. Go back and watch the Cowboys game. Devontae Adams showed the glimpses. Randall Cobb in 11. We saw the glimpses. That's That Saints game. Now, you go back and you look at the stats for the season, not great. Okay, go back and look at who was on that team. That's Jordy Nelson. That's Greg Jennings. That's James Jones. That's Jermichael Finley. It was a loaded team. Even in 2006, the Greg Jennings rookie season, and by the way, that was the best rookie season by a a Packer rookie in the Aaron Rodgers era, and it wasn't even the Aaron Rodgers era. It was the Brett Favre era. And Greg Jennings had 45 for 632 and three touchdowns. But guess who was the leading receiver on that team? Donald Driver. Had 92 catches on 173 targets. By 2006 standards, that was a lot. 1,300 yards, eight touchdowns. Bubba Franks was on that team eating up goal line targets. So there have been consistently over the years extenuating circumstances with these rookie receivers. And you can go back and and you can look at what, what they had to, in terms of a target share, overcome. In 2008, Jordy Nelson, I mean, 33 catches. Okay, you say that's not very many. Don't don't forget, he was on punt return, and like they couldn't they couldn't even keep him out there. But Donald Driver's on that team. Donald Driver got 116 targets on that team. Greg Jennings got 140 targets on that team. You're talking about 250 plus targets going to other receivers, good receivers, Packer Hall of Fame receivers. Donald Driver, a borderline NFL Hall of Fame receiver. Aaron Rodgers has never gone into a season like this. And even, even in 2015, even in 2015, he loses Jordy Nelson. And remember, Devontae Adams was hurt that season. Even in 2015, Devontae Adams, a young receiver, Aaron Rodgers force-fed him. Even he wasn't playing well. Rodgers kept throwing him the ball. Terrible catch percentage, the worst of Devontae Adams' career, 53.2%. 5.1 yards per target, which is a preposterously low number. 9.7 yards per reception. I mean, that those are tight end numbers. He couldn't get open because he lost his burst in, with that ankle injury. Wasn't healthy really most of the season. But guess what? Aaron Rodgers kept getting him the ball. 94 targets in just 12 starts. He would have gotten, you know, well over 110, 120 plus had he started all of the games 
And that was in a year where Rodgers didn't have any choice. He had to throw Devontae Adams the ball. So I think these fears that Aaron Rodgers is just not going to want to throw these rookies the ball. He does not have a choice. Now, Sammy Watkins is on this team. How many games do you think he's going to play? Al Lazard is on this team. I think he's going to be a very good player. I think, you know, we've talked about the potential there. I think a thousand yard season is is very well in range for him if he plays healthy. I I, I said on this show, if he plays 17 games, he's going to be a thousand yard receiver. I believe that. 80 for 1110 touchdowns. That's on that's on the board. Randall Cobb, is he going to make it through the season? Amari Rodgers, what has he shown? Romeo Dobbs could get 80, 100 targets this year. Especially when you're getting this kind of a vote of confidence from Aaron Rodgers. This is not just media hype. And, you know, I had some people accuse the media of, oh, we're just, you're just, it's part of the narrative. The team wants you to, to build that narrative. It's like, no, no, people are using their eyes. These practices are open to the public. I mean, there was a clip of Dobbs beating Eric Stokes that was taken by a fan because media not allowed to take video on the sidelines. Now, don't get me started on the stupidity of that whole thing, but fans can see. They're sold out of Romeo Dobbs jerseys in the Packer Pro Shop right now. And Aaron freaking Rodgers is talking about how the only guys who have produced like this to this point in camp since he's been there, and remember, he's been there quite a while now, a decade and a half, have been the best receivers that he's played with. The Devontae Adams, the Jordy Nelsons, the Randall Cobbs, the Greg Jennings. Those are the only guys who have done what Romeo Dobbs is doing. Now, is that a guarantee that he's going to be one of those guys? Of course it isn't. But I think this is good context to, to remind everyone even me, I, I I try to check myself. Okay, where where are my own biases speaking in? Am I more excited about Romeo Dobbs because I was loving the draft selection because I loved him pre-draft because I, I said I thought the Packers were going to draft him? Is that why I'm excited about him? No, no. It's because he's practicing really well. And even the players, including the four-time MVP who does not give out compliments lightly, is really excited about what he can be. Thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen. Now go make your second listen, Locked On NFL. Our national NFL experts and insiders keep fans dialed in on the biggest stories and the latest news from around the league because an offseason doesn't equal a break in the action. We're going to be back on Monday, family night tonight. And uh, Matt LaFleur said maybe live tackling. We'll see. So plenty of... Stuff to get to on Monday. Back at it five days a week next week. Let's have some fun. Um, and let's uh, let's enjoy. Let's enjoy. Because Aaron Rodgers was asked, are you going to be playing at 45? He laughed and said, no way. Not very many Aaron Rodgers seasons left. So let's enjoy these moments now. I think that's a really important thing. Um, because you never know when they're going to go. Dante Adams, all of a sudden, it seems like he's going to be a Packer for life. He wants out. So enjoy these moments when you can get them um, every day. Not just with your, your favorite team, but with your family and your friends as well. It's it's important that we all do that. All right, follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to hit us up on the Locked on Packers fan hotline, you can do that, 920-341-3775 to stay Locked on Packers.